Hi, I'm Kat and you're listening to Cat Tales. Unleashing his fifth solo album when life was hard and fast, Ricky Warwick aimed to deliver a collection of songs with the simplistic melodies of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, charged with electric hedonistic fury of Johnny Thunders and the Heartbreakers, and boy has he done that. Somehow the almighty Black Star Rider's Thin Lizzy frontman has managed to squeeze in the release of an album amidst sell-out live virtual shows and lockdown, all with a little help from his friends. And, of course, these are no ordinary friends. As well as ex Buck Cherry and Keith Nelson producing the record, it features another ex Buck Cherry band member, Xavier Muriel, alongside Black Star Riders Robert Crane, and guest appearances from Duran Duran's Andy Taylor, Thunder's Luke Morley, Def Leppard's Joe Elliott, Guns N' Roses' Dizzy Reed, and none other than Ricky's daughter, Pepper. This is The Other One with Ricky Warwick. Yeah, hi, Kat. Hi there, how are you doing? I'm doing okay, how are you? I'm not bad at all, thank you. It's so nice to speak to you again. It doesn't seem five minutes, actually, since we <laughs> were on the line last time. A whole, a whole lot's happened since last time, right? <laughs> oh, you're telling me, you're telling me. Crikey, it was back in uh, about May, June last year we spoke, didn't we? And, and now, nine months later, you've got a brand new album out, so you've been busy. Well, uh, well, the album was been, the album's been done for two years. The album was done, recorded in, in 2019. Wow! So it's been sitting. On the yeah. Shelf. What, why have you been sitting on the shelf then? What's been going on here? What well, been... <laughs> why have I been sitting on this shelf? Because Black Star Writers put a we released another State of Grace at the end of 2019. Yeah. And we were lucky enough to get a tour of Europe in to, right at the end of 2019, and then 2020 we were supposed to be out all year with Black Star Writers. Obviously, because of the pandemic, that didn't happen. So my album was always scheduled to be released in, in 2021, regardless of the pandemic, because I thought that we were going to be busy with Black Star Riders. And, you know, it didn't seem it seemed stupid when I when all the Black Star Riders stuff got cancelled. It didn't make sense to move the album forward into a full on pandemic. You know, I was hoping that by obviously this time we would, would be in a better place. Um, which we're slowly getting there. But, you know, really, honestly, that that's the real reason, you know. Yeah, so it's just been sitting there waiting for the right time, and there's nothing better than that, is there, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, when is the right time? I mean, it was always, like I said, it was always scheduled for February 2021 release, regardless of the pandemic. Yeah. That, that had nothing to do with it. Even before we knew there was going to be a pandemic, we were going to release it in February 2021. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, let's talk about that first then, shall we, Ricky? Tell me all about it. So, when life was hard and fast, that sounds that sounds exceptionally, uh, let's say, a summary of your life, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I'm hoping now you're not going to tell me that life is slow and soft, but, <laughs> you know. Life is hard and fast. Well, but yeah, parts of my life have been incredibly easy as well, but I've worked very hard to make sure that those parts of my life are, are easy, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, you know, it, the title sums up a time a golden era of growing up in the 70s and 80s prior to cell phones, prior to being chained to the computer, um, when you had that sense of abandonment and freedom um, that, you know, you you walked out of your house when the sun came up, you played in the streets, you ran around, things happened, and you came back in when the sun went down, when it's time for your tea. Yeah. I think, you know, the that whole thing now that we're, you know, if you arrange to meet somebody now, you, you, I mean, I'm, I'm the same. We'll send them 35 texts. before. I'll see you at 7.30 outside the pub. You're texting right up until you meet that person. I'm five minutes away. I'm, th- you know, I'm, I'm turning around the corner. I'm, I can see you. I can see you. And you're, you're, you're I'm, and, oh, I'm here. And you're right. And it's, you know, when you think about it, it's pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic because back then, if you made it, if you made a time and a place, you either showed up or you didn't. And if you didn't show up, other things would happen. You bump into other people or you just, you know, there was this sense of just wildness and abandonment. I think we've kind of lost a little bit now. And, you know, I'm, I'm not one for really harking back to the past. I'm certainly not one that reminisces, but I think you have to go back to the past to move forward. And certainly growing up in those times shaped me into the person that I am. Yeah. And, you know, that song's really about my hopes and dreams, my dreaming of being a, being a rock and roll, roll star, dreaming of getting out of Northern Ireland, dreaming of seeing the world, dreaming of, of playing guitar on big stages, all, you know, as you do, you know, yeah. when you're a kid and you're 13 or 14, that's really the essence of the song. 
Yeah, amazing. I think you're absolutely right about changing times and capturing that in a song is, is terrific because we do forget now that it is all about immediacy, isn't it? And I think what's well, lovely to hear this is that you've actually had this album on the shelf for a while and then you've chosen yeah. to bring it out. That's almost the, you know, the summary of what that song is about, isn't it? Well, I mean, like I keep saying, I didn't choose to bring it out. It was always scheduled to be released when it's going to be released. Nothing, nothing has changed. I didn't adapt anything for the pandemic. The album was always going to come out in February 2021, so I've stuck to that. Um, I mean, I didn't when I wrote it and we recorded. I had no idea this pandemic was coming, like like and nobody else. I mean, it was it, it, it hit me for six like it hit everybody else for six. But you know, and. I'm not slagging off internet because God, God forbid, how difficult would it would this have been if we did not have the internet and did not have our phones to stay in touch with each other during this time. So there's a lot of pluses about it as well. But um, I think also we've lost something too. I think we've lost um, a bit of innocence. I think we've lost the physicality. You can sit in your arse all day now and, and never get off the couch and, and have everything you need delivered to you. Everything. Yeah. I know. You know? Yeah, it makes you feel that actually we're becoming a bit more sort of separated, aren't we, from reality well, and people. We're, and... we're social creatures, you know, and, and I think we're losing that. You know, we're losing that interaction. Everybody talks now in emails. Nobody picks up the phone to actually physically talk anymore. Mm. And, you know, it, it makes me giggle a little bit because people are kind of going, oh, you know, this is... This is so awful. I've lost my sense of freedom. I'm like, well, you were kind of chained to your phone, and you weren't really going out that much before the pandemic, you know. Yeah, so it's that's like right, suddenly, isn't it? suddenly, suddenly, you're bemoaning that oh, I can't go here and I can't. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, you know, uh, the, the gig's just down the road, and I saw the band three weeks ago, and I didn't, yeah, I just sit in the couch, and you know, EastEnders is on, and I got my my laptop, and yeah, I'm not going to, you know, that that was we were all guilty of that before, you know. I'm yeah. listen, I'm as guilty, I'm I'm as guilty as the next person. Um, I'm I'm certainly not saying I'm I'm any different because because I'm not, but I think this has taught us a lesson. I think this pandemic has totally taught us should have taught us a lesson about how we um, interact and and how we move forward. Yeah, I, tot I totally agree. I mean, it's interesting that we're talking about phones and texting and right up to the minute you actually see somebody. But actually, looking yeah. at your album there, there is a track on there that you recorded on your phone. That, yeah, absolutely. That's incredible. So Clown of Mercy was done in that way. Was that intended or was it just happened to be sort of like a bit by accident? Clown of Misery. Clown of Misery is the title of the song. Yeah. Um, um, look, you know, again, you know, I'm, I, I, it sounds like I'm slagging off technology. I'm not. It's great for so many, many things. And I do, and I, I like everybody else, I use it because it helps me. And everything that I write now, I sing into my iPhone because before I would sing it into a cassette player. Mm. But obviously the, the iPhones are far more advanced and so, a much better sounding uh, version of, of the old cassette players that we all used to have. Mm. So if I have an idea or, or a riff or a song, I'll just click on the phone and I'll just pick up the guitar and I'll sing it into the sing it into the phone. Mm. And that's what happened with Clown of Misery. Um, you know, I, I had pretty much the song written very quickly, picked up the phone before I sort of forgot any of it and sang it just direct into my iPhone and then sent it to Keith Nelson, who co produced the album with me. And he's like, man, he said, the vibe on this is great. He said, we should just lift this from the iPhone, distort it a little bit. It may make it sound like an old 78 that maybe Hank Williams or, or Woody Guthrie would put out in the 40s, and put some crackles on it. Because he said the essence of what you've got there, we're not. We could polish it. We could go in the studio and re-record it. But he said, I think we'd lose the, the the rawness and the beauty of what of the intensity of what you have. And I thought it was a great call on his part. It really was. I was about to say about that rawness because I think that's what you've captured there. It is again. It, it does have that sort of bygone feel about it, as you say, because of the, the sound and obviously that sort of you know the yeah. quality of it. But it's but the fact that it was almost like uh, a demo to start with from your perspective, and then suddenly it's captured. It does have that in that that rawness, which is lovely. Yeah, thank you. Um, it, it it happens. I mean, making an album is about for me is about capturing a moment. You're capturing where you are at at that moment in time, where your head's at, how you're feeling, you know, how you play that day. It's That's the important bit for me. That's why I can never get too, um, too anal on, on, okay, you know, well, I've got, you know, I'll, we need to do 500 takes of this song and, mm. you know, spend three weeks just getting the drum sound right. And I, I, I can't work like that. It's You're capturing where you're at in that time. And, and if you capture something special, what's the point in trying to recreate it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you've got, you know, what's the point? If you already got it, it's done. Well, Move absolutely. on. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And and sometimes it's not better to do it three or four times, is it? Because it's, you know, some of it is about that moment in time, isn't it? That you can't yeah. repeat. 
Yeah, absolutely yeah. wonderful. And I'm, I'm looking down here at the different kinds of songs. I mean, I've, I've listened to the entire album and it really does take you on that a, a journey. You've got everything in there that you would expect from Ricky Warwick. It's there. You've got, mm. you know, your, Thank you. your hard rocking bits. You've got your, your you know, your <laughs> thumping stuff. You've got, but you've also got the ballads. And it's, it's absolutely lovely. It takes you on a wonderful journey. I am assuming that that's what you intended to do, Ricky. Um, yeah, you know, it's just, it's writing songs. It's writing the songs and then going through the, and seeing what you've written. And, and really there's not, I mean, it sounds like a lot of thought went into it and it does, but there's, there's not, no conscious thing of like, okay, I've written a hard rock song. Now I've got to write a slow one. Mm. You know, it's, there's none of that. It's whatever I write that day or what I feel or what I've written, I'll go back and go, well, you know, those, those kind of work together or so it, there's not really, it's not, it's not that planned. It's just, you know, I write every, I try and write every day. Yeah. So I've always got a bunch of songs on the go and it's really just sitting down. It was, this time it was sitting down with Keith Nelson. Okay. What ideas have we got? What songs are making us excited? What songs do we, we want to work on? Do we want to finish? And it was picking the, picking the 11 from, from the mm -hmm. sort of, you know, the list list that we had. Always, always. 
Hey everybody, this is Ricky Warwick, and you're listening to the awesome, the wonderful, the fantabulous Cat Tales. Because lots of variety, and that's what I love about this. You know, you've, <laughs> you go Thank from you. one extreme to the other. So it is Thanks. almost like, how can you summarise it? Actually, you can't. You have to listen to the whole thing. <laughs> well, you know, we actually we actually sequenced the album um, with that in mind. We, we, you know, we didn't sort of think, okay, it's going to be online the way people do now. We thought, well, okay, let's sequence it like, you know, it, it's, it's an old vinyl album with an A and a B side. Yeah. So we actually put a lot of time into, into the running order. Um, so that people, you know, the idea is you listen to the whole record. Yeah. Not skip through, not skip through the tracks, you know. So that's why we sequenced it. That's the, why the running order is the way that it is. And it and it really works. It does. Thank you. And you've got some really interesting ideas in there as well, from the point of view of what the songs are about, which I I found particularly nice when I was listening to it. I mean, I've I've been able to read up on it as well, so I've I've had a bit of an advantage there. But you've you've got songs there about you know an ex US Marine and how they felt, you know when they when they came back from the you know the war and mm-hmm. stuff and how he's been let down and, and then you've got a lovely song there uh, that's inspired by by your daughter. So you've got you know completely different subject matters. Yeah, I mean you know well you know life's full of surprises and full of characters and full of different scenarios and and um you know i think it'd be incredibly boring if i just wrote about one subject um 11 ta- 11 times so <laughs> yes. you know i mean these are you know these are people that I, like i said people that i've met my family experiences that happened to me or to my friends or to my family memories that i've maybe forgotten about and suddenly you remember something you go, oh yeah i remember that guy or remember that day we did that or remember the time that happened and that can just set off a chain of events and start your writing so you know what's going on in the world. How it's you know it, to me, it's a diary. It's it's my it's a form of therapy for me. Um, you know, I, I was writing. I I I just I scribble stuff down all the time. I'm just writing. And it's a way I I feel I communicate way better in in writing and writing words than I do speaking. Mm. And for me, it's it's always been that case. So I sort of put. It, you know, it's it's a form of therapy for me to write those songs. It's getting my innermost thoughts out. You know. Mm. Yeah, I, I can see that. And that's lovely. And actually, and it, it should be a reflection of what's going on in the world today and what's going on in your mind. And it, for me, it's almost like a, a little sneak preview at, you know, in Ricky Warwick's head. <laughs> it's <been> great. <laughs> oh, absolutely. As you know, you're, I mean, I think I'm, let, I'm, give, I'm letting people weigh in more there than, than I would if you were just sitting talking. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm yeah. saying. You, I reveal more about myself. I mean, I always say to people, you know, people go, what are your politics? Well, I said, I said, or what do you think? Or, I said, you know, go, go read some of my lyrics and you'll know exactly where I stand and what I think. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Yeah. And that's what I like about the fact that what you do in all of your, your stuff there, Ricky, it's all about very being very personal. And you do put your, your heart on your sleeve almost, don't you? Yeah. Which sometimes is, you know, sometimes can get you hurt, as yeah. we all know, and sometimes can be very upsetting. But I don't know any other way to write. I have to write honestly and I have yeah. to write from the heart and I have to write from experience. Yeah, I know exactly yeah, what you mean. Yeah. And of yeah. course, on this particular album, you have got lots of guest appearances, haven't you? Of a, a whole plethora of friends of yours, I, I think, is the only way yeah. of saying it. I'm very uh, lucky. Have they all been putting their hand up saying, please include me? You've got. Yeah, no. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, these are, like you said, I'm, they're friends. And my first, first and foremost, they're friends. And, and they're, they're, they're been friends of mine for a long, long time. They just happen to be insanely talented friends and they happen to play and make music that I love and I'm a fan of. Um, I'm, you know, with all these people, we've worked together in some shape or form over the years. Um, you know, Joe Elliott, obviously, produced my first two solo records. Joe and I are very close. I, Andy Taylor produced an Almighty album back in the day. And I've, I've just been recently doing some work with Andy and some of his solo material. Luke Morley, um, Luke and I go way back again, you know, um, Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses. I, I co-wrote a song with Dizzy on his solo record. So it's all a little bit incestuous, but in a really, really good way. And I just, you know, I love these people. They're great musicians. And the great thing about doing a solo record is you can be as narcissistic as you want to be. I mean, you're not going to offend anybody else in the band because it's your band. Yeah. So there's no, the democracy's out the window. So you're not going to piss off the drummer by going, I want so-and-so to play drums on that track. You know, that's what I like about it. You get to work with so many different people. Um, and as much as I love being a Black Star Writers, and I absolutely do, you know, I love I love that band thing and that gang and that. De- but but there's also a democracy that comes with that as well. Yeah. I know when you do the solo albums, you don't have that. It's like you just do what the hell you want, and I I like that freedom. I really do. You know. 
Yeah, I, I can appreciate that. I mean, you, when you're, you're in a band, it is actually taking care of everybody else's his thoughts and, and also their egos as well, isn't it? I'm not saying Black Star of course. have got egos, but every, but every well, musician of course we've has. All, we've, 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 all, we've all got egos. Everybody's <laughs> got an ego. And, you know, it's, you know, Black Star Riders is great. We, we're all quite democratic and we all, and, and those guys are such wonderful musicians and, and they, they interpret the ideas that I bring in extremely, extremely brilliantly. So there's no, I have no problems at all. And I like that environment. I like bringing ideas into the band and hearing what they put into it. But I also like the narcissism of just being a solo artist, you know, and I'm lucky that I'm able to do both. Um, I really am. Yeah. Um, because I just think, you know, it, 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 I write so much and I write so many songs. There has to be an outlet for to me to get, to get them out there or, or I would go crazy. And obviously I can't, you know, certain songs are just not going to work with Blackstar writers or, and, and vice versa, you know? Yeah, I was about to say the same thing there, because obviously it's very clear to me that you, and when we've spoken before, Ricky, you've told me about your songwriting and you're almost compelled to do it, aren't you? So there must be lots of songs that you think, I really want to record that, but do you know what? It just doesn't fit with Blackstar writers. I've got to do something different. Is that what happens? That can happen, you know, um, and sometimes they don't even fit with me and, and, and you know, I'll, you know, you'll end up maybe giving them to two other people to record, which is great as well. Um, hmm. Yeah, you know, I just, you kind of instinctively know, I do, you have a gut feeling that, okay, this is going to be great when, when Scott Gorham and, and Christian Matushi and, and Robbie Crane and Chad get their hands on this riff or this idea that I can, I can hear, I can hear them on it, you know, and I get yeah. excited about it. Um, and then I can play something and go, yeah, you know, this, this is definitely one of my own. I want to finish this on my own because I can hear how it goes and I want to play the guitar on it or I want to play the bass on it or, you know, so you just know, but I think that all credit to the guys in Blackstar Riders, they trust me enough that they know that I'm never going to sell Blackstar Riders short. I'm never not going to turn up to a Blackstar Riders writing session and go, well, I ain't got anything because I used it on my solo album. <laughs> yes. you, know, you know, that's never happened. That's never the case. They know that I'm always going to turn up with an abundance of ideas and, and, and you know, and be just as creative as I would be in my solo stuff. Probably even more so on Black Star Riders. I always keep saying Black Star Riders is the, is the day job. You know, that that sort of takes priority. <laughs> yeah, this is your little bit on the side. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. This is the overtime. <laughs> yes, and the bit that probably keeps you sane as well as as that is. <laughs> Absolutely. Time don't seem to matter When I'm alone with you There's nowhere else I'd rather be This is all I want to do If wishes were like horses Beggars they would ride If distance wasn't measured I'd always be by your side We're all searching for the answers
love you How much I hate to leave Everything that I am Is forever yours to keep We're all searching for the answer There won't be in any book I know where to find you You're always in the last place that I look You're always in the last place that I look Hey everybody, this is Ricky Warwick and you're listening to Cat Tales. So come on, what else have you been up to then, Ricky? You've obviously got the album now is out there, but what have you been doing if you've not been recording this album? Tell me what you've been doing over the last nine months. Um, I've been writing uh, a lot. I've already written the next solo record that's ready to go. Uh, We've written and demoed the next Black Star Writers album, which we're waiting to record in the summer. So that's been written as well. Uh, I've been working, written a couple of songs for other artists, which I've been working on as well. Uh, I've been doing an online show every month, uh, playing an online show every month, yeah, which I've been doing for the last eight, nine months now. So I've been keeping really busy. I mean, I, you know, in a weird way, it's really strange. I was, you know, talking to, to my wife the other day. I, I've never been busier. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it's funny. But yeah, and I, I haven't because I've been, you know, I've been, I've never done more promo. The promo has been amazing that I've done for the record, you know, and I've been working on so much stuff and, it just—it's been great, and it's been uh, been amazing to be that busy because of obviously everything that's going on. That obviously is beyond our control, but it's really kept me focused and sane, and and I'm very grateful for it. But it's it's been good, you know, because I think before you very much had the time where you would go on tour for six weeks and and come home exhausted, yeah, and then have that two or three weeks where you're back home just yeah, acclimatizing back to. I hate the word normality, but I suppose it is just, just, you know, doing the dishes and taking the kids to school and, and, and just be, all, all that kind of stuff that, that, you know, you're in, when you're in that bubble, you're on tour, you're not doing. So you tend to not go near a guitar or not, or then maybe I wouldn't write a song for a few weeks because I'm just, I've come back off a long tour and I just want to get to know my family again. But with this now, it's different. I'm not going on tour. Yeah. So I feel that I have to get up and be productive every day. You know, it's almost like I've got a nine to five job. I mean, I get up, no, and I'm like, okay, going to my little studio. I'm going to work on something. Have I got promo to do? Is there emails I need to answer for, for business? That kind of thing. Um, so it, it's it's weird, you know, because it's 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 like there doesn't seem to be enough hours in the day at the minute, and that's just insane when you think that we're all in a lockdown. It's just okay, I don't know. I know exactly I'm very what lucky. you mean. It's weird, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> it is. Yeah. I think what I love about what you've been up to, you know, I, I follow you obviously on, on, on Facebook and stuff you. and, you know, I've seen yeah. your work and I know that you're out there doing a lot on the internet and still reaching for your fans. So you've still got that connection. It seems to be like you've really embraced that new way of living uh, because it's not going away, is it? It's going to be there now. I think so. I mean, who know? You know, I know we you know, things are looking obviously a lot better now with the vaccines and, and obviously we're seeing, you know, infection rates thankfully coming down. But what's going to be the new normal? What's going? What's it going to be like in seven or eight months when there is some kind of normality, normality back in the world? You know, how, nobody knows. And, and I think that the online shows will maybe continue, maybe hand in hand with the live shows. Maybe, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll do the odd online show now as much as you'll do a tour. Um, I think people have accepted that as part of it. It's not the same, and I know it's not the same, but mm. it's quite good fun because, like you said, you can really interact with the people during the that show. I mean, I, I, I play on the platform Stage It, and the the people out there can interact and send in comments while I'm playing, and I can see these comments, and you can talk to them, and yeah. it's kind of cool, you know, because it's not like, you know, when you're doing an acoustic show and people are talking through it and they're interrupting you, it's like you can hear their comments and what they're saying, but 
it's quiet and it's written and you can sort of, and you can reply to them, you know? Yes. So it, I kind of like that, you know, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I think I can see you you continue with that. I really can because it's, I think it almost goes hand in hand with that live performance when we finally get back to that. Nothing's going to take away seeing that audience though, is it? You know? No, you know, nothing. Them enjoying themselves and jumping up and down. No matter how great technology gets, Kat, no matter how advanced we get, you will never replace that physical and human emotion of standing in a, in a yeah, hot, sweaty venue and just really absorbing the music and, and, and social interacting with the people around you. You just can't replace that. It's the best thing. Yeah, and, and that's, of course, what drives you anyway, isn't it, as a musician, to have that, the, the opportunity to perform and see, what, and see the immediate Absolutely. reaction yeah. of the audience. Yeah, yeah you, you, mean, you, want to see what, you want to see your songs live and breathe. You want to see them connect with people. You want to see people singing along. You want to see people react to, to, to the music that... that that, that you've written well I do anyway you yeah. know and, and to me that's all about writing the song recording it people getting to hear it and then taking it out into that live environment and and, and connecting with those people one-on-one and yeah. um it's just it's hard to beat you've been listening to Cactus. to listen again to this and other tales go to cattails.co.uk 